Welcome to this week's Time for Reflection. During the month of October, we are reflecting on some of the incidents in the life of Simon Peter. We began with him getting out of the boat. Oh, that's while it was still in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And then last week, we reflected on the argument that he had with Jesus. This week, we turn to Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 30. And we take time to reflect on what is normally described as Peter's confession of Christ. It's only just struck me how appropriate this passage is, because this month in the Sunday services at Braintree Baptist Church, we're looking at the theme of who are we? And in this passage, Jesus asks the question, who do people say I am? It's rather surprising to find that Simon Peter isn't the first to reply. Others beat him to it. Some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Others say you are Elijah, returning to us after all these years. Others say that you're one of the prophets who we hear about in the synagogue. Mark doesn't tell us whether that was three different disciples, each with a reply, or whether it was one disciple with three answers. Although he does say they replied. What Mark tells us Rather, what Mark does tell us is what was said next. Jesus asks another question. Who do you say I am? This time, true to form, it is Simon Peter who gets in first. You are the Christ. Last week, we reflected on Peter arguing with Jesus when Jesus tried to warn his disciples of what was going to happen to him when he was in Jerusalem. This time, there is no argument. Just four very brief words. You are the Christ. On a Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., I take the discipleship classes. And as something of an aside, I was taking those three words that we use so easily Lord Jesus Christ. I was making the point that Jesus can be thought of as his earthly name. But Lord, oh, that's very different. That's a God title. But what about Christ? Christ is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, which means the anointed one. When Simon Peter answers Jesus's question with the words, you are the Christ, he was actually saying, you are the promised Messiah. You are the one that we Jews 
have been waiting for for hundreds of years. You are the one the prophets have been saying would come and restore the nation Israel. That it might be everything that God intended it to be when he made that incredible promise to Abraham. Well done, Simon Peter. Ten out of ten. Jesus must be very pleased with your reply. No rebuke from Jesus this week. But hold on a minute. What did Jesus just say? Don't tell anyone? Why not? You are the Christ. Why keep silent about it? Don't you want people to know who you are? Yes, Jesus was and is the promised Messiah. The problem was that the people had had got completely the wrong idea about the Messiah. They thought he was going to be another David. He was going to drive the Romans out of Israel. He was going to become king of Israel. He was going to make them a nation that all the other nations would look up to and admire and possibly fear. That wasn't the Messiah that Jesus was destined to be. The people ought to have known better. Did not Isaiah speak of the suffering servant? Don't tell anyone. Because it will only create problems. Read again the story of Palm Sunday. And you will see the misunderstanding in action. The crowds totally ignore the fact that Jesus enters Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Or oh, they're too busy shouting out, Hosanna to the son of David. But before we bring this time for reflection to an end, we really do need to give some further thought to the second question that Jesus asked. Who do you say I am? And can I say that again with perhaps a different emphasis? Who do you say that I am? Is it significant that Jesus doesn't say, who do you think that I am? Or who do you believe that I am? Last Sunday, I was preaching at Morden Baptist Church, and I took three readings from the book of Ezekiel and preached three mini sermons but each mini sermon was on the theme of speak the word each part related to the topic of being a witness to jesus but as i speak about jesus as i witness for him how am I going to describe him? How am I going to speak about him in ways that those I am speaking to will understand what I'm saying 
and more importantly, who Jesus is. So many of the words that we Christians use, almost without giving them a second thought, are meaningless to those that we need to witness to. Who do you say that I am? I certainly won't say that you are the Christ or the Redeemer or the Great High Priest because they won't understand. Will they understand if I say you're the savior of the world? Will they understand if I call you Lord? You see, the answer that Simon Peter gave was theologically correct. But then Jesus warned them not to tell anyone, not to tell anyone that he was the Christ, even though it was true, because others wouldn't understand. Maybe we, know, we need to turn to some of the ways by which Jesus describes himself in John's gospel. Do you know what I'm referring to? That list of the I am. Time for reflection. Reflect on who we say that Jesus is. As we try to share our faith with those who don't know what we know. Let's share together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior, to be our Redeemer, to be our Lord. We thank you that in our faith journey, we have grown to know him better and to understand more fully the mystery of who he is and why he came to this earth. We thank you that as we have grown in our understanding of him, so our love, our devotion, our worship has also grown. We thank you for all that he now means to us and for the many ways he's changed our view of life. We thank you that he has transformed our way of living this life, but also our beliefs concerning the world that is still to come. As we bring to you these, our prayers of thanksgiving, we also turn to you to ask for the help of your son. Lord Jesus Christ, after your resurrection, you told your followers that they were to be your witnesses. And we believe 
that that includes us, as well as those who lived 2000 years ago. We recognize that we need to witness with our words, but also by our ways, by how we live. Lord, for all sorts of different reasons, we're not very good at witnessing. And we ask for your help. Lord, we want to share our faith with others. But to be honest, we're not sure how to. Will you help us, please? Lord, we take time right now to pray for those we know who don't know you. We don't want to keep you to ourselves. We want them to know you as well. Please help us. These are our prayers we ask in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>